And welcome back to News On. President Donald Trump uh, just announcing minutes ago a class action lawsuit today against Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg and Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. You heard it right here on Real America's Voice. That announcement coming just days after the launch of a new social media platform, Gitter, run by former Trump advisor Jason Miller. President Trump is completely, as you may or may not know, but banned from Twitter and not allowed on Facebook. And that is going to happen for at least another two years unless he wins this lawsuit. Joining us live to discuss this more and what this lawsuit could mean for the future of big tech is former Obama campaign director Robin Biro and CEO and founder of the stock swoosh, Melissa Armo. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Miranda. Good morning. So, uh, Melissa, we were talking with uh, Jeff um, from Cloud Hub. We were talking to uh, Dr. Tom Borelli and, and uh, John Fredericks about this. This is a pretty uh, big announcement, probably not a surprise announcement, but where do you see this lawsuit headed? Do you think we're going to be headed towards regulation and things need to be modernized, if you will? I don't know what the outcome of the lawsuit is going to be, but it's probably going to head straight to the Supreme Court at some point because the lower court, courts uh, either way, either party is going to end up appealing it. Interestingly enough, though, if you look at the stocks today, if you look at Google, uh, which owns YouTube, and you look at Facebook, the stocks um, were close to brand new all-time highs today and are falling off those highs after this news. Because, of, again, this is really negative when you look at it because they've been trying to control what is going out there. And the really important factor of the timing of this is Trump is doing this now in 2021, because if in fact he's going to run for reelection in 2024, he wants to get through the, get through this lawsuit and potentially win this lawsuit so that he can get back onto Twitter and back onto social media full time to try to run for reelection in 2024. Yeah, you mentioned running for election. So John Fredericks was alluding to the fact he was there live on the ground when the president was making that announcement that this is going to be basically an issue he's hoping to campaign on. Is this a big enough issue like the border wall? Obviously, people would argue that was the issue that helped get him elected. Do you think that this is important enough to Americans that it could help get him elected again? I don't think this is going to help get him reelected. Honestly, I think if you just look at the last six months of the decisions that the Biden administration has made, some of the decisions that people are really against, like closing down the pipeline for one, uh, some of the other issues, which we're going to talk about a little bit, what's going door to door with the vaccines. I think Trump has so many things to talk about that this is just going to be one of a bucket full of issues. I don't think people are going to vote for Trump or not vote for Trump just on free speech alone. I think pretty much uh, people are, in, for the most part, in agreement that free speech should be allowed. And if in fact they're gonna act like a publisher, like a newspaper, if Twitter or all the social media platforms are gonna right. act like their paper, a publisher, a media site, then they should be allowed to be sued. You can't have it both ways. Yeah, but this, this has been a tricky issue though, right? Because you've had a lot of Republicans argue, at least in the beginning, this is a private entity, but things have kind of evolved since then. Um, and then you have people, like I said, Jeff Brain, CEO of Cloud Hub, saying that this is long overdue. Robin, what are your thoughts again on this announcement from former President Donald Trump on this uh, massive lawsuit? Do you see it, where do you see it headed? And do you think that this is a big enough topic for Americans that it could help get him elected in 2024? Miranda, breaking up big tech is definitely a, a topic to campaign on. And look, anything is fair when it comes to politics and campaigning. So, and, and I have to remind that the viewers at home that anybody can sue anybody for just about anything. It's up to the courts to determine whether or not it, it has any standing. Uh, so I don't have any issue with him filing these lawsuits. He's also has a long history of threatening to file lawsuits and not following through. So I'll be anxious to see. I do think though that he will follow through with these with these lawsuits. This announcement in Bedminster was pretty pretty substantial, uh, and I think that we'll see this in, in short order. I myself am an advocate for breaking up big tech. I think that it's it's about time. This is something that's evolved over the last 15, 20 years, and they have undue influence and power right now, and they need to be regulated. I think that's something that we can work uh, in a bipartisan manner to achieve. I'd love to know what our viewers uh, think about this topic. Are you in agreement? Do you think this is something long overdue? You can always let us know by finding me at Real Miranda Khan, hashtag share your voice. I want to move on to our next topic. So 
businesses and government agencies around the country are still scrambling right now to recover from that latest major ransomware attack that hit over the holiday weekend. Of course, as you know, this hack comes just a couple of weeks after President Biden met with Russian President Vladimir Putin about these cyber attacks. Press Secretary Jen Psaki assuring reporters the other day that the United States will take action if it feels it's necessary. But Florida Congresswoman Kat McCamick, excuse me, called it comical, her words, saying Biden does not have the guts to challenge the Russians. Take a listen. So first, let me say, let me give you a little bit of an update. Since the meeting between President Biden and President Putin, we have undertaken expert level talks that are continuing. And we expect to have another meeting next week focused on ransomware attacks. Uh, and I will just reiterate a message that these officials are sending, as the president made clear to President Putin when they met. If the Russian government cannot or will not take action against criminal actors residing in Russia, we will take action uh, or reserve the right uh, to take action uh, on our own. The process of watching President Biden and his team try to talk tough is probably one of the most uncomfortable, disingenuous things that I've seen here recently. It, it truly is uncomfortable. But we are absolutely capable of responding. We are capable of deterrence. The sad fact is that this administration refuses to take action. And I do want to mention uh, Congresswoman Kamek will be on America's Voice Live following News On. Uh, but Melissa, um, we've seen several. You, you were talking about... Um, you know, the pipeline, right? So we saw that. We saw one of the major uh, meatpacking companies in the world. Um, and now this huge ransomware attack. I mean, it's one thing to talk the talk, but are they willing to walk the walk? Uh, do you, what do you think? I think this is going to continue until they put a stop to it. And we did talk about this before. And I said it is going to happen again. And now here it's happened again. This is too many in a short period of time. And the problem is they're paying the ransom. So of course they're going to continue doing it. And not only that, Putin is going to continue to deny that he knows anything about it or who's really involved with it. So really, what again is the deterrent to stop it from continuing if in fact the Biden administration doesn't take a hard stance and the people that are getting ransomed continue to pay uh, to the people to get the power back, whether it's through Bitcoin, whether it's through currency, they're not able to really apparently track where the money's going, so it's continuing to happen. And really, what is the outcome? There really is no deterrent to stop it. And if they don't do something to stop it, we're going to see more and more and more of these. And it could be something really where it happens nationwide. This has happened to some, I'd say, What's happening worldwide, really, because a lot of really? these businesses are global. Yeah, I mean, it, but it, I mean, it could be something where it, where we can't even talk anymore. It shuts down electricity, where we don't even have phone communication. Something mm -hmm. so egregious like that that it could take really to that point, but we don't want it to get to that point. What if it happens to the banking system? Can you even imagine what would happen if it happened to yeah. a bank, a large bank or financial system? I can tell you right now, the banking security of banks right now, they're probably way, way up involved in this, trying to figure out to get ahead of this right now, because look at how many times this has happened in the last six months. Yeah, well, what we're talking about now thousand, over a thousand businesses that were impacted over the weekend. Obviously, a lot of these are not just here in the United States, but worldwide. We saw what happened um, with the pipeline, right? That that affected uh, gas shortages on the East Coast of this country. And then again, that the meat supplier company it wasn't just here in the United States, but it was around the country. So when we come back, Robin, I want to give you ample time because we're running to a commercial break to respond to this. Do you think the Biden administration is being tough enough? And if not, what should be done? And maybe it's not just the United States. We'd love to get your reaction to that. Plus, still ahead on News On, a deadly 4th of July weekend sparks a Democratic governor to now declare a gun violence emergency. Find out where and if his fellow Democrats will give their stamp of approval. Plus, President Biden fails to meet his vaccination goal of 70%. He was supposed to do it over the weekend. So now that's prompting a new initiative. But will that even make a difference? We'll discuss this and so much more with our bipartisan panel next. Also, we're going to have an update on what is now Tropical Storm Elsa uh, brewing now in the Gulf. Uh, we'll give you an update on its track and the impact it's having on our country when we return. We'll be right back.